first of all, mm-hmm. I would uh, thank you for joining us for Something Wicked DocuFest this year. Yeah. And um, what I would like you to do is to tell everyone uh, who you are, uh, what did you do on your film, and what is your film? Okay, you got it. Well, my name is Jennifer Ismay Pickford. I'm a filmmaker and environmental activist as well from British Columbia, Canada. Um, when I first traveled to India, which was in 20, uh, 2008, I was really struck by the plastic pollution problem. Mm. I was particularly troubled to see a group of people burning plastic in a bonfire and standing around it to keep warm. And that made me realize that they could actually have no conscious awareness of what plastic is, neither of its toxic composition nor the fact that plastic is not biodegradable. So I started to wonder, how did a country which for centuries sustained itself with its um, grassroots cottage industry style of commerce become such a mass consumer of commercial plastic? And what if any recycling programs were in place. And then I also started to wonder, well, how did the colonization of India contribute to this environmental disaster? And so I was really struck by this issue. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, India had become a really important place for me in my heart and in my sort of spiritual journey. And so I decided to make this film just really as a love letter to India, as a way to give back. Um, to India for everything that I had received from it in in my travels. And also to, you know, make some sense of this issue, raise awareness and come up with some concrete solutions. Yeah. So I could go on, but (laughs) (laughs) what else would you like to hear? (laughs) You brought up a good good reasoning because in the film, you actually uh, show and mention the whole burning of the plastic. And when I see, when I saw that, it's it's like an eye opener. It's like, oh wow, they they actually burn the plastic to keep warm. I've never seen that before. I didn't never. I would not have believed it had you not put it in your movie. I was like, yeah. and um, uh, one of the things I, I I I really want to point out is in your film you mention a lot of different ways in which plastic changed their culture. Um, and, 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 and you know, you mentioned when they used to have, they used to make the pottery cups, and they would throw them away, and throw them away. It was natural, and it was something that would biodegrade over time. But they're doing the same thing with plastic, which doesn't degrade. And you know that that's one of the causes of why there's so much pollution. I mean, you brought up a lot of great imagery of just how bad the plastic, uh, uh, uh the chaos is over there. So. I was like, I don't even know how to address that. <laughs> you, you, well, I just, <laughs> I, I was really surprised, you know, to learn that um, plastic is something that's actually a pretty recent um, uh, thing. In India, India always had other alternative mm-hmm. packaging methods, which they used. And um, so I thought it was going to be a good idea to look at sort of these these packaging things that they'd been using in the past that were actually things that never created such a problem as plastic Mm -hmm. has and to really look at you know alternatives to plastic which india had in its traditional packaging materials such as um, clay such as you know grass cups and things that they were using all of which a newspaper all of which is biodegradable and just can go back to the land and I thought that in that way I could sort of educate the world about alternatives that might benefit everyone Hmm. Um, there's certainly a problem there in India with plastic pollution but it's not how the west portrays it they portray it as it's India's problem it's their fault but the reality is that the west brought plastic to India and um, so and my personal experiences traveling and developing friendships with people in India led me to develop an awareness about the issue. Hmm. And so this film is my way of sort of working towards decolonizing the plastic pollution problem by looking at the roots and the causes as well. Yes. So it's it's a sort of a different perspective. I'm, you know, kind of trying to place the responsibility back in the hands of the West who brought plastic to India. 
And um, from this perspective, I can consider it the accountability, our accountability. It's almost like a, a spiritual perspective. We're looking at sort of the oneness, the wholeness, you know, that it's not just their problem, it's our problem too. And um, so, yeah, I call it a spiritual journey as well as, as yeah. a film journey. <laughs> Well, I, I, accountability is a very good way of of, of describing the whole thing because you're the way you uh, have uh, uh, the way you have presented the problem. There is an accountability issue from the West that just seems to go or get swept under the carpet. You're right; uh, it, it becomes uh, oh, it's an India problem, but plastic, uh, as it was originally manufactured, it was like something that we gave to them. And they kind of, we didn't like, we gave them the keys of the car, but didn't teach them how to drive the car, you know, type of thing. Um, exactly. You got it dead on. Though, <laughs> and exactly. you, and, and by putting the film in a, your first person perspective, it, it kind of, it drives the, uh, it drives the whole story uh, home a little bit more than if it had been just like a, a standard documentary that you were just presenting a bunch of facts. Um, I think I, I, I'm hoping I'm remembering this correctly. So forgive me if I don't remember this correctly because I watched so many films. Uh, I think there's that that scene that where, where, where you're at the I, I guess the, the the you're at a lake and you're uh, kind of um, you burn uh, the the candle that you put into the water that then floats away and you see all the others you, you see all the um, other ones that are out there like that, and then you see it passing by the people, and it kind of gives you this sense that you're kind of giving back to nature, and you're kind of um, um, you're trying to, I don't want to say a tone, but the <laughs> ideal is to you're giving back to nature, trying to find a solution to this huge problem instead of it just being tossing a, a plastic bottle in the water, which is you show imagery of lots of plastic in the water and everywhere else. So it's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is a huge problem. But uh, those little moments like that in the film brings back the humanity in the fact that we need to address this issue. But this is a culture that has changed based on plastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, our actions do affect each other, especially as the world becomes smaller, you know, there's more people mm -hmm. here. It's it's our, our attitude of separateness from mm -hmm. each other that causes humans, I believe, to view other countries as not connected to their own, you know, to consider them as dumping grounds for pollution and waste, you know, Kevin, as multinational corporate industry keeps shuffling their business onto countries that are vulnerable to their financial interests. Yeah. And so by looking at this kind of we're I'm trying to educate people about this issue and how, you know, we kind of we're we're all part of this. We're all in the same river, uh, so to speak. We're all floating downstream mm -hmm. together. Um this this planet is, you know, it's 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 not going to benefit from us considering each other as different, other countries as inferior, you know, there's no good there's never gonna be any, you know, I guess re resolution of this issue if we do that, if we think we can just move all the garbage to for instance china to other countries you know and just bury it i mean at some point there's going to be nowhere left to bury it mm -hmm. so what are we going to do then and um if we look at india for example as a place where they have some alternative solutions to plastic they always did you mm -hmm. know when we look at our own cultures what did we used to use before plastic was only really brought to countries in mass quantities in the 1960s before that we had all all sorts of alternatives and so i think you know looking at india for example as as part of that solution instead of you know somewhere where we can just you know ship our our industry and our plastic to and and for think we forget about it i think is a nice way to look at how we can all benefit mhm mm mhm mm 
So uh, just so I, I, I'm aware, um, is your background in filmmaking or was it that uh, you were in India and you saw this huge problem and you decided to make a film based on your experience of being in this culture and you saw a problem? Well, it's uh, my background is a, I am a filmmaker. Uh, when I first visited India, it was just on a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but I, I had such a let, let's just say life changing experience there. Um, it was my first trip abroad going to India, and it really did change my viewpoint as far as, you know, how to um, when you go to India, you kind of have to come to terms with the fact that things aren't going to go the way you thought they would, you know, and, uh, and, and so it's, but it, in that there's kind of a, a sense of feeling unif unification or feeling whole coming into yourself and into a state of, you know, completion within yourself. Yeah. So, so in so doing, I think, um, and because I had such a, epiphany and I and I really felt transformed by going to India I just thought well I want to give something back to India and this really hit me when I saw the plastic pollution um, was so dense there and then people were actually burning it and they didn't really have this awareness that they were breathing in these plastic fumes I thought okay here's something I can do I can create a film about this and maybe in that way I can give back and it felt really good at that point to to move forward and you know create a treatment and you know a proposal and do some fundraising <laughs> and, you know all those things because i knew that i i i loved india enough to sustain me through that whole sometimes challenging and difficult process of creating a feature documentary film <laughs> <laughs> So you bring up a good point. What was one of the most uh, challenging things of making this film? <laughs> well, I think it was that um, the it would have been, I guess, the fact that I couldn't do it full time. You know, I wasn't oh. fun, fully funded. And so it took me about five and a half years oh. of part, making the film part time. And, you know, so I was. I, I run a, a documentary production company that also does commercial projects. So I had to do those and kind of do this on the weekend, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but it was okay. Cause it was something I looked forward to every weekend because, you know, I really loved it. I felt every time I was making the film, I was going back to India again. You know? And uh, so actually every step of the process, I really enjoyed because <laughs> I, I could re-experience what, what it was like being there and and my journey there. And I was really, I guess another challenge would be, did I really want to put myself in the film? You know, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, I, I felt that that was, that was a hard call because I, I knew that I would be a bit critical of myself and not <laughs> so, you know, not really have the same perspective someone else is going to have. Another director would know where to cut we're not to cut and it wouldn't be based on well how how I how I look in the scene or you know what I'm saying it would be based on you know objectivity but gradually I have to say that I did get more objective about you know having myself there I started to see myself as a real character in the film mm -hmm. my perspective was just as important as everybody else's and so I think once I reached that place I had a little more peace about being in the film <laughs> <laughs> I think I think having you in the film added that 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 personal aspect. So like when I was watching it, like I said, it wasn't like one of those just uh you know talking heads uh info uh, information type of documentaries. It was your personal journey, uh your personal perspective on this crisis that you saw in India. And that gave it a uh that 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 as an audience member uh, it, it brought me closer to the story you were trying to tell, and it made it more personal. Um, because I, I I don't tell all, everyone this, but I never know what I'm watching before I watch them. I don't read what their movie's about. I literally read your title, <laughs> "Sacred India: a, a, a Plastic Revolution or Evolution." I can't remember what. I'm it's always forgetting. Revolu it's revolution. Revolution. <laughs> revolution. A uh, plastic revolution. revolution. So Dude. I read. Create evolution. <laughs> That's all I had going into the film. 
So when I'm watching it, I'm getting the entire story from your perspective and your how you see and view everything. And that's what drew me into the story. So uh, I'm actually glad you did it that way as opposed to the other way. So, uh, Well, that's good to hear. And I'm glad that, you know, it worked out for you. And, and I'm hoping that, it, you know, other people will have a similar response to it where they're glad that they have... Mm -hmm. me in the film to provide sort of a reference to the experience um and i'm happy to say that the film's been well received in india as well um <laughs> i was accepted into several film festivals there and i've won some awards so that's really you know um encouraging it makes me think well that they did appreciate the film and, and what i'm trying to say and in fact it's very important to me that to feel that you know yeah. um, support coming from the country of concern as well yeah yeah so that's great uh, oh. i have a i have one question for you though shoot shoot um <laughs> when you watch the film were there any of the characters that to you that really stood out you know you felt that their what they had to say was really important besides myself of course <laughs> <laughs> um ah uh, characters in i honestly could not remember uh yeah, any this is a test no it is, is a, a test, test. <laughs> uh unfortunately I, I probably in the last two weeks probably watched 100 independent films <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll just I'll just remind you who was in the film then, if that if that's okay, and then that's maybe fine. that'll help you trigger trigger your memory. Trigger. Um, so there was a fellow named O. P. Agarwal. He's the director of environmental NGO resources. Okay. Uh, India, um, and then there was a woman named Christine Kalkuhu, and she's a business developer development manager of ChangeWorks Recycling. She's a Scottish lady. And then there was um, Akaria Vinay Koshik. He's the founder and director of Jeev Moksha School of Yoga. He was sort of the guru in, in the film. Oh, the guru. Okay. <laughs> and uh, then there was a lady from Canada named Peggy Carswell. She's the coordinator of uh, Fertile Ground East West Sustainability Network. Uh, she works a lot with uh, the tea plantations in um, Assam, India. And then there was Manjalika Singh, who was the um, uh, Awaz FM radio host. Do you remember her? Anyways, there was a few different characters in the film who discussed the issue of India's plastic mm -hmm. pollution problem from kind of unique perspectives and offer their solutions as well. No, uh, that's a good uh, thing to add in there that you not only... Uh, showed your, um, I guess, the, the problem, but you had the experts who kind of came up with some of the solutions to the problem as well. Um, where, what, what was, what, well, who was one of the most, uh, uh, or how challenging was it to get these people to uh, your interview subjects for this, for this documentary? Because this is a challenging question that, uh, to ask people. Well, I didn't have too much difficulty, I have to say. I, I'm happy about that because um, I think a, a lot of times when people, when that's their passion and they're an expert in a certain subject or area, they're just really, you mm. know, excited to talk about it and to give their perspective. And uh, so in a way it was, uh, I wouldn't say it was difficult having anybody talk about it. I'd say it was difficult getting people to shut up because <laughs> 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 you know, they, they were all really, really great. And they had a lot of um, interesting points to make all from their own unique point of view. And I'm really grateful that I did have them in the film because of course, having other characters in a film gives it legitimacy, you know, having different points of view gives it that sort of, um unbiased kind of perspective and uh christine was particularly interesting because she looked she talks about how plastic can be a good thing you know plastic mm -hmm. is not necessarily bad it, it can be really good and really useful it's just the overuse of it is what's creating so much problem in the world today mm. so i really liked having her point of view and um and I have to say that, I, you know, all of the characters really did help me kind of piece together different aspects of the film. I also have, um, uh, there, there's there's an organization in the film as well. I'm just trying, I'm trying to think about, can you remind me? No, and, <laughs> there's an organ, organization in the film um, that actually deals with the cleaning up of the plastic 
out of the ocean. So it was nice having them oh, in the yeah. film as well. Um, because they had uh they were talking about something that's happening today that's actually benefiting the problem. And um so so being able to bring them in is to to say, okay, well, there are solutions and there's there's actually organizations that are offering concrete solutions um as we speak. And so that's a way to a call to action. Yeah. Uh, basically say okay well this is the problem and these are some solutions and what you can actually do is maybe help an organization such as this um which is to say no to plastic and to donate your money to them if that's if you feel so inclined you know or to to help out or volunteer with them as you if you feel so inclined so it's giving the audience something to do once they've they've heard yeah. about the problem you know and um so uh, having five years to put the whole uh, film, all the, uh, the the segments and put it all together, uh, what was one of the most uh, difficult things about making this film other than time? <laughs> well, I think the most difficult thing was probably just, you know, um, letting go. <laughs> because, oh. I, I, well, it's just that I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, honestly. And um, I was involved in many aspects of making the film. Mm -hmm. And 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 I love the journey, and I love everything that I was learning, but at the same time, you know, it's sort of like letting go and going. Okay, the film is done now. You know, yeah. the the soundtrack is done now. You know, the different stages are. This is this is finally done, and then moving on to the next stage, because you know I, I get quite detail. I'm very detailed oriented and finicky about <laughs> everything, and so I'd say that was the most difficult for me. Is just letting go. <laughs> Letting go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on now. <laughs> uh, I can just imagine that the first, the rough cut of the film was probably like three, four, five hours long. And having to whittle that down to an hour and a half probably was a daunting task. <laughs> Absolutely. I have to tell you, it was. And <laughs> luckily, I did have a uh, assistant editor come in and I gave it to her. And I said, okay. <laughs> You know, you you can do it. You can do it. You know, and then I and I and I actually left the project for a couple of weeks and let her go through <laughs> everything. And and uh, she did a wonderful job. And so I had uh, her name is Lorraine Skolan. Just give her a little blank <laughs> here. Um, but yeah, so I would say that that was it. You know, it's just like moving, letting go of the film and moving on and saying, okay, it's done now. It's finally done. But it felt great once I did that. <laughs> I didn't think it would, but <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it, it, you know you just need that separation from it for a little while. Now you come back, and I'm I'm hoping, or I'm uh, I'm uh, is this at the beginning of its festival run, or is it somewhere in the middle? Is it doing really successful on screenings? Where's your film at right now? Well, it's actually in the middle of its festival run. Okay, um, it's just about to start. Um, showing on uh, video on demand so the film will sure. be able to be seen on the green channel which is a environmental issues uh, channel and i'm also looking to upload it shortly to um, prime video direct okay so then people will be able to watch it on online uh, through those two outlets and um i'm considering uh, maybe this is going to be something that I'll have to get another editor in as well for. But I'm considering um, creating a 45-minute broadcast version that I can oh. sell to different TV stations. Okay. So I'm considering that because it's not that easy to sell a feature documentary to broadcasters because there's not that many windows of opportunity for them to be shown. That is interesting. I did not know that. Huh. Now you do. It's <laughs> and I had to learn it the hard way too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but no, it's interesting. <laughs> to you. Well, yeah, well, it's interesting because I just spoke with uh, uh filmmakers who did a uh short film for us, but then they made a just under an hour long version uh for broadcast. And I wonder if they did that because a longer version would have taken uh it would have been harder for them to do. Um, so it's very interesting that you say that. I was like, oh, I never, I, and you're, I, 
He just never dawned on me. Um, I always, <laughs> I'm always under the assumption that it's better to have a feature length version than it is to have a just under uh, a just under sixty minute broadcast version. But I guess in documentary films, uh, you might be absolutely correct because it's very rare that I see the ninety minute documentary films uh, that stream a lot. I usually see them about an hour long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you know i mean it might be different with uh dramatic feature films you know yeah. but, uh, but feature documentaries yeah it's very difficult to find uh programming for a feature wow. yeah yeah and um, i don't know why um yeah there's not a lot of documentary broadcasters to begin with maybe that's part of it too but mm. But yeah, I mean, so it, so my next challenge will be if I do go that <laughs> route is, okay, you know, edit, re-editing the film and then letting go. Of, that's the 45 minute edit. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's all fun. It's all fun. I have to say, I, re I really enjoy it. Good, good. Mm -hmm. uh, well, by all means, make sure to send me any links for your film to get the word out, whether it's to purchase it, watch it, view it uh rent it whatever um uh, okay. because what we'll do is we'll make sure to post all that for you uh get the word out as much as possible uh we try to do that for all our filmmakers uh whenever we can so uh just make sure to keep us in the loop and we'll make sure to uh get that information out uh for your film so definitely definitely thanks so, but uh <laughs> i just it, it, yeah it, it's it's good to, it's good and not good to hear that it took five years for you to make the film, but it's a passion project. So that's oh. a great, uh, that's great to hear. Um, the thing is, uh, I think a lot of people watching this, it may feel discouraged sometimes when it takes so long to get your film to its final uh, version, I guess is the best way to say that. But documentary films are, they, you don't have a script. You are literally creating it in the edit and it's okay to take time to get it to the best version of itself so exactly well it's so good to have your approval because i have to tell you, you know there's that's definitely what it's about i mean I, I can't tell you how many people ask me they were asking me repeatedly well when's it going to be done now that you filmed it you know it's like it's supposed to happen right away you know but like you say it's all in the edit it's that's where the real work happens that's where the real story comes out and yeah, we're going to have to probably film more too, because it's like, well, when we find the story, then there's going to be pieces missing. And so you're going to have to go back and get those pieces, which is kind of what we did with um, with the film and with, um, you know, the different groups that we were working with. We had to go back and say, OK, you know, it's like this. We still have this question. You know, this isn't resolved. Can we can we film you again? Can we do more? And um, but but that's all good because you develop these relationships with people. It's not just a one time filming experience. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a part of the journey along with you and you're going to go back and you're going to be, you know, sort of following their story. And and, and 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 I really enjoyed it. So but yeah, so let go of, you know, kind of this idea that it's all going to come <laughs> together because we've got a script and we've got storyboards. We don't have script and storyboards <laughs> when we're doing a documentary. We've got. <laughs> totally different approach we've got a treatment which is not a script and it's kind of a loosely based story but you know the film could go in any direction and this is just what we give to the funders is treatment it does, doesn't necessarily mean what the film will end up becoming in the end and um so hope but hopefully some of those funders and people are going to trust you enough knowing from your past projects that you know you're going to be able to make a film and um, and they'll be with you hopefully every step of that process. So, uh, so are you still? Is this still a subject matter you're going to continue to uh, delve into, or is there something um, else that's now that's gonna you're gonna take a little break and then find something else to uh, spend your uh, passion on? Well, I, I'm kind of um, I, I'm taking a break. <laughs> just because you know this was a big labor of love you know and and even just the marketing of it and the distribution of it you oh. know, I'm taking on a lot of that and that's that takes a, a lot of my time and even now just doing the closed captioning for it and things like that I mean I don't know how long it'll be before I can move on to my next project um 
but um but I, but I trust like with uh, my past films that that'll come to me it's not something I'm going to have to chase after mm -hmm. and uh, so so when the time is ready and when I'm you know when when I'm when I'm, my slate is clear then something will come along but I'm not jumping on anything right away <laughs> 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 right. This one still needs to finish up its festival run, and then you need to make the hour long version, forty five minute version. Yes, so that's right. After the broadcast, you still yeah. got a little bit more time. It's all good. That's right. That's right. I can still coast on this project for a little longer, right? <laughs> that's oh. right, and I don't really mind, you know, because it's so much fun mm. getting it out there. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one quick question. Uh, in regards to uh, your, your, how much in, in India has uh, affected you, um, do you still go back to India uh, on a regular basis, or is it you know, how, uh, how how is it now? Well, uh, since uh, things have changed a little bit, travel and so on since um, <laughs> pandemic, of course, and yeah. you know, so I I haven't been back to India um since I was last there which was in 2018 mm. um but uh, you know I do have good friends there now and uh, so I do feel like it's a bit of a home away from home especially the Rishikesh area and um so it would be nice to go there and present the film I'm hoping to facilitate that in some way now uh, maybe as part of one of the film festivals that are happening in India I'm not sure but um but it just I think that would be wonderful to 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 go back there and, and do a bit of a screening tour or something like that with the film nice nice yeah, yeah so that'll come together in time i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> it will, well we'll be uh we'll be praying for you to go back there to present the film uh back there of course uh is there any uh final words you would like to leave audience members about your film well, I guess it's just to say, you know, I hope that, you know, people enjoy watching it. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, it's definitely a labor of love, but it does kind of, you know, I think it, it it's eye opening in the sense that, you know, it shows how the the we're not separate from each other at all when it comes to this issue. Um, we just have different ways of sort of um, dealing with it. And um, we need to sort of kind of take look at our, our our responsibility but i'm not i'm not trying to make people feel bad you know about <laughs> our our hand in it yeah. but you know to say there are solutions and there is hope mm -hmm. and these solutions that india has to offer could really benefit us all worldwide and so i'm hoping people will look at it, at it from that perspective and to see okay well how can we also learn from india yeah for this process well, uh, Jennifer, it has been a pleasure speaking to you about your film, yeah. Sacred India. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, your film sees nothing but continued success and that it gets to as many audiences as possible because it is a crisis that needs to be at least acknowledged by a wider audience and a wider group of people. So, uh, I, but but continue this. The send us links, send us everything you can. Make sure that we uh, get the word out for you. And uh, it has been a pleasure talking to you this evening. So, thank you so much. Likewise, wow. and good luck with the festival. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, you have a pleasant evening and uh, much success for the future. Thanks so much, Kevin. Really appreciate it. All right. All right.